there is a community at the Urban University. You can connect. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Hi, Shalini, can you hear me? If you can confirm, you can hear me. Hey guys, thanks for joining. Hi Amar, hello SRD. We'll just wait for a few more folks. How you guys are doing? Are you doing good? Hi Sahil, thanks for joining. Just waiting for some more folks, then we'll start. Hello everyone, thanks for joining. Just you can confirm if you can hear me and just press the like once. We will have a knowledge sharing session today. Thanks, Shalini. Thanks for your words. Okay, so without any delay, guys, let's start with today's discussion. And I have again put some of the questions and some of the uh, topics for discussion. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Meanwhile, others will join. First question today uh, for you from machine learning point of view. Um, this is machine learning question. Give definition and one example of each. What is a lazy learner and what is a eager learner? What is the uh, give a definition? Give the definition and one example from each category. Hi Tusar, thanks for joining. So you have to give the definition and one one machine learning algorithm example from for both. Lazy learner, people are saying K and N. Why K and N is a lazy? First of all, what is the definition of lazy learner? And what is the definition of a eager learner? Lazy learner is K and N because it just stores the data. So stores the data means what? It will not it will not learn the pattern of the data. And what is what is one example of uh, eager learner? I mean, how how storing the data is different from something else? Funny is saying lazy just stored data without learning from it. And what is the uh, eager learner? Funny. And give me one example also from both the categories. How about eager learner? Give one example. Okay, so as you said, right, lazy learner is basically something which stores the data and doesn't do prediction um, at that moment itself. I mean, doesn't try to predict, doesn't try to store a learned model. Okay. On the other hand, eager learner is something where, you know, learning happens in advance. And then when you submit the data, it will just take the data and try to do the prediction, right? So normal machine learning model like random forest or regression models, etc. eager learners because it learns the patterns, keeps the model with us. And when the new data comes, it predicts. On the other hand, some of the KNN, some of the rule-based systems, 
if the data comes then only it will see how to do the prediction so those are kind of lazy learners okay on the same same line one more question you have to match the column simple one um, which one prediction will be fast and which one prediction will be slow so lazy learner 1b people are saying people are saying okay it's a mixed response few people are saying lazy learner will be slow few people are saying lazy learner will be fast in terms of prediction eager is slow people are saying okay so we have a divided opinion here now so uh, can you think and tell me one more time which See, lazy learner is basically something which starts acting on the data when you throw the data for prediction, right? So in my opinion, also it should take less time. On the same amount of data, if we are, if we are trying to do a prediction on let's say k-means, on the same amount of data, same infra, if we are doing trying to do a prediction on let's say logistic regression, maybe this will take less time, logistic regression or decision trees. Funny is saying lazy is slow because it will use all the data for prediction every time because it does not have a trained model or trained entity on which it can do the prediction, right? So every time prediction has to be done, entire data needs to be used and something needs to come out from that. That is the reason it makes the prediction process slow. Are you in agreement with me, everyone? Or somebody has a different view? So basically lazy learner prediction will, will become slow because everything has to happen from zero. And eager learner, it will be fast because there is a trained model on which model, um, you know, prediction can happen. Okay, so most of you are agreeing on this. So let's move on to the next one. So this is a kind of generic question basically. I want to just see your under, I mean, uh, see your approach for this. Okay. So for example, you have a 10,000 cross 500 pound size. That is the size of your pandas data frame. So the important thing here is 500 rows. I mean, 500 columns, sorry. Okay. So you have 10,000 rows and 500 columns. Now I gave you 500 names in a node, notepad. Okay. Saying these are the name of your columns. You have to assign these names to your data frame. How do you do that? I want to see the approach here. Like the, in the notepad, you have these names, okay? Name one, name two, name three. How do you assign these names to your Pandas data frame? I want to see your approach. So the worst approach will be writing all these names manually, okay? What is the better approach and better than that and better than that? Welcome everyone who have joined now. You can just go ahead and press the like button. We are discussing something. Um, just, you know, some approach of how we can automate certain things. Okay. See, Amar, your answer will not work, okay? Because uh, name one, see, what you are saying is copy everything from here and paste inside the bracket. It will not work because name one, Python will treat that as a variable, which is not a variable, okay? Open the text file, separate it on comma, append, append it to a list, then make the list as column names. That is one approach, any other approach. But another thing I want to tell here is, there is no quotes here, if you remember, if you see here, um, if you want to create a list of name one, name two, name three, right? Then there should be quotes before name one and after name one, am I right? Otherwise Python will treat this as a, this as a variable and it, it will be a problem. So you have to, you have to have quotes in the beginning and end of name one, similarly for name two, similarly for name three. 
you got what i'm saying kartik data frame copy paste that will not work use column argument in the pd dot that all of those things are fine but my first my first point here is like the way i said at the moment you say in python you say name one name two name three it will think it is a variable and start giving error so what karthik is saying is we can we can append str of name one will it take like that ajay is giving a different approach copy name in excel add quote okay so when you copy it will come as a probably row uh, I, i'm sorry columns okay th this way also you can do that and no problem yeah all all that will come one by one and then you you know add quote and then copy paste in list this is one approach that i will also normally take what ajay is saying so first thing to understand here is without quotes it will not work so anyhow you have to append the quote for appending the quotes you can't do it manually i mean it will take too much of time so we can take everything in the excel append quotes keep our comma also intact copy everything paste in python our interpreter and get this done any other approach we can take simplified approach this excel is helpful here that is for sure okay so if no no other approach then we will take this approach itself for example we will take all these things in excel we will kind of break it by comma later later add a comma if needed but we need quotes first right so quotes are important here you can give me a different view also if you want see this is dakshi is asking where from we are getting these values this is just i am giving you in a notepad no i am just writing in a notepad and giving to you just to understand your approach like how do you simplify the process okay so excel is one approach we can take any other thing you can think of just comment here okay let's move to the next one this is a sql query uh, on the left hand side what you can see is a is a sql table i mean um, simple database table what you have to do is you have to write a query to find top second highest salary you can think second highest salary ignore top uh, from it department second highest salary from it department you have to find that record can you give me the simple query for this i have tried to put name of some of the common attenders of this session actually i am one of the attender then srd gaurav ankit imran imran is not has not come today srd is there gaurav and ankit have not come anyway so you have to find the in it department the second highest salary guy which in this case is aman i think aman 100 it that record i will appreciate if you give me the full query in place of pseudo codes select salary from emp order by salary dsc limit 11 but where it is coming here i am saying from it department salini what approach you can take here maybe a sub query approach or whatever you feel is better group by salary can we make partition on the basis of department using window function we can but that will be very complex no need of making it this complex select star from it department group by group by salary group by salary 
No, I think you mean group by department, order by salary. Select salary from employee where department is equal to IT. Okay. Order by salary. Limit one one. What limit one one will do? Window function. Window fu anything other than window function simple simple thing. Okay, SRD in your query, I can't see max it will give right, not the second highest, right? By way of this is a generic query, we can see this later. Okay, Karthik, one one will give the second output, I understood. In that case, your query may work. Okay, less than equals to. Less than equals two more records can come, right? I mean, it is not necessarily second record in SRD your query. See, whatever is less than max salary, all those will come, right? Not only one record will come in the output. You can check that again. Any other approach? Group by department, order by salary, two, one, where? No, this query will, see this query syntax is not right, Salini. You are writing where after group by and order. Do you think this will work? So one simple thing that we can do is we can filter on department IT. Order by salary, take the second record right what karthik is saying select salary from employee where i mean if this is an employee table where department is it you order the entire records by salary take the second second record obviously descending you will you will do the ordering and the same thing you can do using some kind of temporary table you can create and some kind of sub query you can create and from there we you you can compare the salary and take but that that will be kind of little complex if this simplified thing is giving you the 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 true the true thing to understand here is the you know the syntax of sql query how we will execute that and without making making it, it much, much complex how we can get the things done okay so the same thing can be done in multiple ways one simple way is just a simple query you write you put a where clause say it order by salary take the second record and then there can be other ways also, okay? So let's move on to the next one. This is also, I think, same thing I have put and a different requirement. Write a query to fetch all records where first character of name is a vowel. So first character of the name is a vowel means Aman will come, Ankit will come, Imran will come, right? So how do you do this in SQL? the comparison uh, has to be done, right? Yes, where has to come before before all these things. So where is a, is a row filter before, you know, your group by having, etc. So this is correct, Sarin, in your case. Okay, how do you find out this? The records where? Select start from EMP where left you are taking from left name one in AEIOU. I think this should be fine. Any other approach? Karthik's approach looks fine. Any other approach, guys? But he has forgot to give the quotes in AEIOU. That is fine. In A, he has given the quotes, but not in others. It should be, all should be in quotes, but that is okay. Um, using percentile A, percentile E, percentile I, percentile. Um, 
is this one by one comparison or in one shot we can do uh, for example names first thing is equal to but percentile is like wild card so after that anything can be right so it should be an exact match i believe yes so in all in all the things code should be there that is fine srt your approach i did not understand others how do you do this is there anything apart from left command which karthik has used is there something known as substrings i mean can we do can we do substrings can we do rejects can we do wild cards can we do multiple approaches is what i'm trying to bring in here so if yes then how okay to sara has come with a query select star from emp where name is equal to percentile a name is equal to percentile a or percentile e means wild card a e i o u you are comparing uh will the is equal to work with percentile a or like work and also the percentile a should go in quote i believe correct me if i am wrong sarini is giving the similar query which uh kartik had given before that's fine okay and substring etc may also work here so three four approaches we saw now rest of the approaches you can think um so so the idea here is to discuss various approaches okay one simple thing is take the substring and compare the first character otherwise use the wild i mean compare directly a e i o u or use the wild card and say percentile a sorry a percentile e percentile o percentile like that that will also work okay so let's move on to a generic discussion interesting one so based on your work experience based on how many ever years of experience you have what is your opinion on this do you think that your manager has nothing to do apart from taking status from you and apart from making your life difficult or do you think that uh, you know there is a reason why manager keeps asking you status and uh, you know he has more people to answer in short what i am trying to ask you is do you think that your manager is kind of one villain villain in your life what is your view on this because one day you and me will be managers and managing multiple teams right so is your manager a villain in your life or it's okay i mean um he has his own things to do and then it's it it is his also job to take status from you nobody none, none of your managers are watching this so you can comment anyway many people are here with the different name so not a problem so manager has more works to do is one feedback coming manager have their own work also yes that is true for making to work easy and make our life and company's life easy my manager is too good wow that's amazing do you guys know what is macro management and do you know when uh, there is a very thin line between uh, taking status update and micro managing right so do you feel sometimes that your boss is micro managing and if yes then how would you how would you not micro manage if you are if you are a manager suppose suppose you become a manager right and you have 10 12 people to manage then how would you ensure that work is happening and you are not micro managing also just tell me one one liner
so your your people should not feel that uh, you know you are kind of every hour you are taking the status at the same time the work should happen and there there should not be a toxic environment in the team so devarti is saying have a weekly call that's it but sometimes people also take you know their bosses for granted right so there are people if you don't ask regularly they may not do the work manager is a silent killer depends on people i mean not always breathing down my neck i feel you man <laughs> some people are in habit of so there was a manager i used to work with okay and he's a, he's not a you know technical manager he's just a people manager program manager kind of person and you know what is his job every time i get a email for example let's say somebody some other team is asking me for one file okay and i am just sending them the file and i get a ping from that person send the file okay similarly somebody some other team member ask something i am just passing the information i get a ping pass the information okay reply to this person okay approve the leave so it's sometimes very very irritating what happens is your your time will go in that okay for example if somebody asks you every one two hours what is the status right your time goes in that so that should definitely not happen but without taking status update it's difficult for them to convince you know tell to their boss what is the delay how the things are happening so that is also needed so there is a very thin line all of us you and me should understand how to manage that i also manage kind of small team you guys also will be managing and tomorrow we will have a bigger team so we should learn how to how to you know assign the work to the team make them responsible for things at the same time not micro manage so these are the things all of us should learn actually yeah funny is managing a team and also a part of team reporting to a manager most of us like that only so um, you know it's it's not black and white always like it's, this this cannot go like a rule book this should be done this should not be done like that yeah so we can take our own our own things and you know ensure that we are learning on that path that is the reason i kept this topic here let's go back to our uh, technical topics again some of the technical topics i will put i have put it here okay so first thing you don't have to use any tool no python no r nothing and if you are with a pen and paper which i recommend to always sit people with pen and paper in this class or let's say computer find 70th percentile of this without using a tool can you do this do you know how to compute percentile without using a tool hello everyone who are watching please press the like button once there are only 6 7 likes 20 people are watching please press the like button once so that it will go to others as well and they will join so my question is do you know how to use the how to compute percentile without using any tools okay so people are giving answers but in parts sort them first arrange in ascending order find then what come 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 up to a number okay come to a number for example if if there are these if you tell me the steps tell all the steps in one one shot don't tell in parts just tell all these steps in one shot how do you compute without using tool 50th percentile is median fine 
but here the need is to find 70th percentile. How to find that? Percentile by hundredth into n plus one, where n is what? So in this case, are you saying 70 by 100, which is like 0.7, right? Into n plus one. N is your number of observations. Okay. So for percentile, there is a formula, which, which I think Salini has given. If you put your percentile value, by 100 into your number of observation plus one, then you have to go to, you have to sort and take that observation. For example, if I sort these numbers, then first observation is first number, second number, third number, fourth number, and then you apply this formula and you go to that number. Arrange in ascending order, middle number is 50th, count remaining number after middle and divide by two. But here I'm saying 70th percentile, how it will, 70th will not be divided by two, right? So it, it is good if you go by the formula, which Salini has written here, if that is the correct formula, okay? So that way you can compute, you can see the formula because sometimes some, some interviewers will tell you to do these things to check your uh, understanding, okay? Because most of the time for the small, small things we use tool only. So just to check your understanding, they might say you good to know these things, fine. Let's move on to the next one. So you have to give me the practical example, not the bookish example of different types of bias that you know. For example, selection bias. So one example I gave you, right? So bias in the data, what kind of bias you are aware of? So you can just, this is not a, not a mathematics or not a Python question. You can just keep writing whatever comes to your mind. That I will not tell what is bias. So for example, we call it a selection bias, just, just an, uh, just an example I will give you. For example, I go to a classroom where, uh, you know, uh, men and women are there. I mean, boys and girls are there. I have to take a sample of five. I take all the five people from boys side. So that is a kind of selection bias where I'm selecting all the samples from one particular gender. I should not do that. Similarly, there are other kinds of bias. So one example is selection of cricketer. Yes, I agree with the current situation. This is a very interesting situation because we have lost Asia Cup by big margin. What happened to Afghanistan match? India lost to Afghanistan also. I don't know. Bias towards Alia, but just because that many people is going to see Brahmastra. Not sure people are saying many advanced bookings are happening for Brahmastra. I don't know what, what actually is happening. And Rohit Sarma says that 95% there are no problems in the team. Do you think no problems in Indian cricket team? Rohit Sarma is saying in dressing room environment is very cool. We are very, very stress-free, tension-free. We have no problems at all. Selection of food for your birthday party. Yes, it can be one kind of bias, yeah. So there can be different types of bias introduced by data and bias introduced by model itself. So read about that in terms of machine learning. Okay. Uh, how data bias is introduced and how model introduces the bias. These are theoretical concepts. So, uh, you know, good to know.
yeah many types of bias are there people are typing measurement exclusion confirmation if there will no problem if not there is a problem yes yes right many users are biased towards iphone right asutosh okay so let's take one or two question from python so uh, this is a this is a interview question and uh, you know it used to come in our college campus interviews like how do you find maximum number from a list without using inbuilt function so what will be the approach for this i just want to see if you remember these these basic uh, programming questions this is a basic programming question which you will find many places i give you a list of numbers you have to tell me what is the maximum number in this list without using the inbuilt max function what will be the approach guys you can give me a pseudo code also don't worry if else what if else will do so there is there is a set of numbers or list of numbers you have to tell me the maximum number from the list without using the max function short no short you are using function right don't use function don't use any python function your own logic how do you find the maximum data has one target column and independent column target has range of 0 to 10 uh, okay we can take these questions later first let's solve this because this is kind of knowledge sharing testing max don't use internal python functions i am telling this is a simple programming question guys come on i have a list of numbers i want to find the maximum number without using the max or any python function how do i do that try try after this just one more python question okay pavan kalyan max is equal to 0 highest number is equal to 0 for number in numbers if number greater than highest number yes something like this i wanted what tushar is saying logic without using a function i mean python function so i was expecting this which which tushar is saying and pavan is also saying and now many people are saying okay fine so but don't use a inbuilt function is what i am saying so what you do basically is you take a temporary variable you say that this is your variable maximum variable and you change the value of this variable every time you encounter a variable which is with a number which is larger than this so one temp will hold the maximum which will get changed if any number it encounters which is larger than that okay so that is the logic behind this and the last one from python so here i am giving you a string my name is aman kumar here in in aman m is there right so i want you to delete that m so my name is a a n m will be gone how do you do that what approach you will take 
I want you to delete the M from Aman. You have this st entire string. Now, however you want to process, you can process. Obviously different approaches will come. So what all approaches we can take? Slicing, so where from you will slice and how you will join? Just can you give me some idea? See, I'm telling you, you have this entire string. So if you're operating on only AMA and Aman, then you first need to tokenize. You first need to get Aman separate. Salini, in your solution, you are replacing M with blank, which will work, but in my also and name also, M will get replaced by blank, which I don't want in Kumar also. For K in Aman, if I not equal to, this will work, but, but um, you are missing one step that is tokenizing the, so, in this entire sentence, you have to get Aman out first, and then you have to do that, which you can do in multiple ways. But is there any other way? Is there any other way I can do this? First of all, make this string into a list. Yes, fine, then. Then go to that that number, I mean, zero, one, two, three, go to third element of the list and replace you are saying was seem right. And then convert it back to the string you are saying. Isn't it a little lengthy thing? My string one, then remove it, you are saying, Ali. So was seems approach is fine, but that will be a little lengthy. Um, since this is a limited character string, can you think of anything else? It is not a very large string. S dot replace M13, okay. Means you are counting and going to that particular character. But M13 will not go to that character. S dot replace M13. M13 will not go to that character, I believe. See, Priyanka is, what Priyanka is doing is, obviously after tokenization, she will separate A and she will separate last two characters. My string I need to use. So I will tell you multiple approaches can be there. One approach can be, you can simply make it a list, okay? Go to the third character of the list, third element of the list. First element will be my, second will be name, third will be is, fourth will be Aman. So go to the fourth of the list. And then in the fourth, you replace M with blank. That is approach number one. Approach number two, since it is a limited number of string, so you simply count, okay? You simply count and go to this, this character and just make it blank. That is another approach. <coughs> but since in the string, you cannot directly uh, make blank, so replace with blank. And third is you can, you can cut it in two parts. Up to A, you take in one string. Up after A, you take in another string and then join both these. I mean, remove the first one, join both these. So these are different, different approaches you can take. It depends on what one, which one you are taking. And again, for this session also, my last uh, slide is a request to all of you. So please share my channel within your known Telegram groups and within your known WhatsApp group so that people can come and join because uh, not many people are kind of pressing the subscribe button and all of you, if you want to join this live session, right? I request you immediately go and press that um, bell icon. What will happen is if you press the bell icon, at the moment I start live, you will get a YouTube notification. So you can join immediately, okay? So must press that bell icon, subscribe, you would have pressed. If you have not pressed, press that. And please share, that is more important. Please share within your known people, okay? Within your known people, within your friends, within your Telegram groups, et cetera, okay? So today's session was also 
mostly around some machine learning concepts, some generic, you know, day-to-day -day work kind of thing we tried to cover and some of the SQL concepts, some of the normal discussion. If you think your manager is your devil, that kind, that kind of discussion. Some of the statistics thing and some of the Python things. So I kind of keep it a mix and match kind of thing. I hope you like this session, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me in the comment if you are liking the structure of this, how I try to create it. And don't forget to share with your friends if you are liking the live session. Dutch liked the discussion about the manager more because he likes masala things. Everybody likes masala things. That's where people are interested in knowing. People are not interested in watching Brahmastra. They are interested in knowing what happens to Brahmastra. Okay, so you can you can ask one or two questions if you want anything technical, non technical, anything, then we will close. Okay. Vasim is saying being a fresher, can I expect ML data science job? You can expect, but don't target uh for specifically data science job and don't be very picky in terms of which companies is giving you chance okay so first of all you need to remove the fresher tag for that any company which is doing uh anything in data area be it data engineering be it data analysis be it reporting visualization or any size of organization, it need not be very large organization. You should be open for all these opportunities, even some unpaid opportunities, okay? It's because your first target is to get some exposure to industry data, industry use case. Once you do, do that, then, you know, you can always look for a better, better and better thing. SRD is saying, please start vlogging. We can see the places of England. Yes, yes. See, the, the thing is, uh, sometimes I feel people who make travel blogs, right? I also go to visit many places, but uh, sometimes I feel if you have a camera in your hand, then you can't enjoy that place itself. But yes, that's a, that's a good suggestion. I mean, uh, I, I go to various places. So I went to France, I went to Belgium, I went to Scotland. I'm planning to go to Italy and UK anyway, different places I go. So it will be good. That's a good suggestion, but I am doubtful how many people will watch, but at least you guys can watch. I think if I create some vlogs. So to Ali answer your question, this session is usually every Thursday, 10 PM IST. So that's why I told all of you, please go ahead and press the bell icon so that when the session starts, you will get a notification. Today also we started 10 PM IST. Dakshi is asking, how long do you think we should stay in a data analyst role to move to data science role? As soon as you get a chance, you can make a move because obviously if you're making a move, then your, your salary should go up. You should get monetary benefits, right? Sarani is saying, I have experience in software developer one year. Can I grab the chance in data science field? Obviously, why not? Learn the concepts, do some good projects and go ahead. Many people have done, every day people are doing. Okay. So what's the time now? 6.25 for me, which means for you, 11 p.m. India. Okay. So we will close in two minutes, guys. If, if we don't have anything, so please join. Okay, Ali is having something. I have three years experience as a full stack developer. That's good. It is going to help you a lot in your in your data science journey. If you if you are good in coding and programming. Okay. 
so thanks everyone for joining and please join next uh thursday okay same time meanwhile please keep sharing videos of unfold data science if you like to other people that will help me a lot and keep watching keep learning see you all with my next video guys take care thanks everyone for joining again have a good night